basically, as you know all, we start from two oscillators, a fixed oscillator which produces a nice sine wave, and a variable oscillator which produces a nice sine wave. <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> what happens if I put both together? I get a very interesting, still nice and more interesting sine wave, which is a addition of both sine waves, which that lets us already see that around there, which is called the envelope, there is a wave of a much lower frequency, which is the difference between the oscillator frequencies. And the high frequency in between it is the sum of both frequencies. So our oscillators, as you know all, are working on inaudibly high frequencies. For the ether wave standard, it's around 290,000 Hz. So, and let's, for example, have the var variable oscillator on 289,000 Hz. I will have here my difference of 1000 Hz. And here, in, in the middle, the sum, which is um, 579,000 Hz. They have the same amplitude? Huh? They have the same amplitude? Uh, the signs? Uh, when they arrive at the mixer circuit, they have the same amplitude, yeah. Okay. <clears throat> if the thermin is not defective. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> now, what happens? We don't need these 579,000 hertz. So basically, there will be a low pass filter which will kill them, and <laughs> we stay with the 1000 hertz which we can hear and which go later to other processing for the volume, and this will be our audible tone. But none of the theremins ever, except a few special uh, models or pro brands or prototypes had a clean sine wave at, at, at its output. Because a sine wave basically is physically interesting, but musically it's not interesting at all because it has no harmonics. And we've uh, almost nowhere in nature on acoustic instruments we find pure sine waves because there's always some resonance or some distortion involved, which adds harmonics, so that for a human ear, a natural sound will always be a sine wave plus several harmonics, which gives a natural timbre. 